in this module, we will be discussing about the concept of testing of hypothesis. Statistical inference is one of the very important field in statistics, where we try to generalize our results to the population that comes from the sample. Testing of hypothesis provides a tool and a basis for the statistical inference. And it helps us to generalize the results that comes from the sample to the overall population. In this process, it's very important that we understand what hypothesis really means. A hypothesis may be defined simply as a statement about one or more populations. This is frequently concerned with the parameters of the population about which the statement is made. Like a hospital admin may hypothesize that the average length of stay of patients admitted to the hospital is five days. Similarly, a public health official, maybe nurse, she may be interested in hypothesizing that a particular education program will result in improved communication between nurse and patient. Likewise, a physician may want to hypothesize that a certain drug will be effective in 90% of the cases of which it is used. So by means of hypothesis testing, one determines whether or not such statements are compatible with the available data. We got to know that whether these statements are true or false. For this, we talk about we made hypothesis. Now, hypothesis can be thought of two different types. There could be research hypothesis and there could be statistical hypothesis. The research hypothesis is a conjecture or supposition that motivates the research. It may be the results of years of observation on the part of researcher. Research hypothesis directly leads to a statistical hypothesis. Statistical hypothesis are hypotheses that are stated in such a way that they may be evaluated by appropriate statistical methodology. The ultimate goal of the testing of hypothesis is to prove that the hypothesis is true or it is false. But this should be done with absolute certainty. We would need absolute knowledge. That is, we would have to examine the entire population. But practically, we cannot study the entire population, most of the cases. In such situations, we rely on the information that comes from the sample. When we study a sample and we generalize our results to the population, that is what we perform and we study in the testing of hypothesis. There are two types of statistical hypothesis. One is called null hypothesis, other is called interval hypothesis. Let's first talk about the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is a hypothesis that is to be tested. It is denoted by a symbol H0, sometimes referred to as a hypothesis of no difference. In general, the null hypothesis is set up for the express purpose of discredited. Consequently, the complement of the conclusion that the researcher is seeking to reach becomes the statement of the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is assumed to be true unless there is a strong evidence to the contrary, similar to how a person is assumed to be innocent until proven guilty. In the process of testing of hypothesis, the null hypothesis is either rejected or not rejected. Note that failure to reject H0 does not mean that the null hypothesis is true, and there is no formal outcome that says except H0. Whereas the other statement that is opposite to the null hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis is a statement of, of what we believe is true. And this is a statement in favor of which we gather evidence. So in, in, in our sample, the data cause us to reject the null hypothesis. Usually the alternative hypothesis and the research hypothesis are the same. And in fact, the two terms are used 
interchangeably. If null hypothesis is denoted by H0, alternative hypothesis is denoted by HA. The type of hypothesis we're going to discuss in this course. One important factor that we should always be thinking about is the indication of equality. It could either be sign of equal, greater than equal, or less than equal. So these, these signs must appear in the null hypothesis. Let's take a few examples. We want to answer the question, can we conclude that a certain population mean is not 50? The null hypothesis will be H0 mu is equals to 50, where mu represents the mean, which is the average, against the alternative hypothesis that mu is not equals to 50. And this mu is, equal, is not equals to 50 information has been taken from the statement that was given up in the example. In example two, if you want to answer the question that the population mean is greater than 50, then our hypothesis are the null hypothesis, as we said earlier, it should contain the sign of equality. H0 will be mu less than equals to 50 against the alternative hypothesis that is HA mu greater than 50. In example three, we can see that, that if we want to know, to conclude that the population mean is less than 50, the hypothesis are null hypothesis mu greater than equals to 50 and alternative hypothesis mu less than 50. In summary, we may state the following rule of thumb for deciding what statement goes in the null hypothesis and what statement goes into the alternative hypothesis. What you hope or expect to be able to conclude as a result of the test usually should be placed in the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis should contain a statement of equality, either equal, greater than equal, or less than equal. Whereas alternative hypothesis contains not equal, less than, or greater than. Likewise, the null hypothesis is a statement that is to be tested, and the null and alternative hypothesis are complementary to each other. That is, the two together exhaust all possibilities regarding the value that, the that our hypothesized parameter can assume. One, there are certain important precautions one should take. Neither the hypothesis testing nor statistical inference in general leads to the proof of a hypothesis. It merely indicates whether the hypothesis is supported or is not supported by the available data. When we fail to reject a null hypothesis, therefore we don't say that it is true, but that it may be true. When we speak of accepting a null hypothesis, we have this limitation in mind and do not wish to convey the idea that accepting implies proof. Instead, we use terminology that we fail to reject H0 instead of explicitly stating that we accept H0. Let's talk about the process of the testing of hypothesis. Whenever we get the data, we follow certain steps to perform a test of hypothesis. The very first step one should take is to evaluate the data. Once the data is evaluated, we look for the review of the assumption. Once it's done, we state hypothesis. Our null and our alternative hypothesis are stated at this step. Once we are clear about the, the data situation, the assumptions, and the hypothesis, that's when we talk about the, the test statistic that we want to use. Once the test statistic is determined, we try to determine the distribution of the test statistic. That could be Z distribution, that could be T distribution, that could be F distribution, chi-square distribution, and others. Then we state the decision rule. And once we have made the decision, we calculate the test statistics and make use of the decision rule and our results that comes out of the test statistics and we use both information to make a conclusion. And our statistical decision, that could be do not reject H0 or reject H0. You might notice we don't really say that we accept H0. Rather, we say we do not reject H0. As a first step, when we have to evaluate the data, 
the nature of the data that form the, ba that form the basis of the testing of hypothesis must be understood. Since this does not, when we want to evaluate the data, the nature of the data from the form, when we want, as a first step, when we want to evaluate the data, the nature of the data that form the basis for the testing of hypothesis must be understood, since this determines the particular test to be employed. Whether the data consists of count of, or measurements, it must be determined, because for the counts, there are certain different types of tests that to be performed, and if it's a measurement variable, we have a different set of tests to be performed. The second important step is to test for the assumptions. Different assumptions lead to different tests to be employed. A general procedure is modified depending on the assumption. We have seen it in terms of confidence interval estimates. With a slight change in any of the assumption, the whole process changes. Likewise, in testing of hypothesis, we follow the same trend. We try to test for the assumption. If any assumption does not fulfills, our whole methodology changes. So these assumptions mainly include assumptions about normality, that is about the distribution of the population from where the sample comes from, the equality of variances, independence of the sample. These three assumptions play a very vital role when we perform the testing of hypothesis in this course. 